Good morning, Mackenzie Johnston with Tri-State Livestock News, bringing you your Monday morning headlines concerning fair cattle markets. Sponsored by Sandhills Beef Company. Eat like a rancher. America first means buying directly from the producer. Be the change. To learn about Sandhills Beef Company and everything they have to offer, head on over to their website, sandhillsbeefco.com. Also sponsored by RCAF USA, fighting for independent American cattle producers. To sign the petition for the beef checkoff referendum, head on over to RCAF's website, or you can sign it at www.checkoffvote.com. According to Tri-State Livestock News, last week the North Dakota House Agricultural Committee voted down HB 1487, a bill that would have made the state beef checkoff voluntary. The current law states that cattle producers must pay $1 per head for every beef animal sold in North Dakota to go toward the to go towards the state beef checkoff. So that is on top of the federal $1 beef checkoff that North Dakota cattle producers also have to pay. According to North Dakota Beef Commission Executive Director Nancy Jo Bateman, very few people would have voluntary con voluntarily contributed to the program if the law had been changed. Numerous cattle producers testified in favor of the bill due to problems they have experienced in getting their refunds from the state beef checkoff uh, that they pay. And uh, many expressed their, frusta their frustrations about North Dakota dollars supporting the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, the NCBA. Cattle producers made it clear that they are unhappy that NCBA opposes COOL, country of origin labeling. Various testifiers noted that the generic beef promotion done by the beef checkoff does not necessarily help U.S. or North Dakota cattle producers. Very few individuals spoke against the bill. The individuals that did testify, testify against it stated that producers have the option to request a refund if they aren't happy with the management of checkoff funds. They also believe that the beef research, education, and promotion done by the checkoff is helping producers. They also stated that if the state checkoff were to be made voluntary, many producers would choose not to contribute. So to read more about this story, go ahead and click on the link above in the caption. I think it's incredibly interesting in, in this story that Nancy Jo Bateman, the North Dakota Beef Commission Executive Director, stated that if the state beef checkoff program were made voluntary, a lot of producers wouldn't pay into it. And that right there, I think, says it all. The fact that producers aren't willing to pay a dollar to a program that is supposed to be promoting their product says everything. Clearly, they aren't getting enough bang for their buck because producers would pay in that dollar if they felt like the program was helping um, sell their product, bringing in more profit, helping them make a living, break even but clearly they feel that the program is not doing that for them. A very interesting situation. Yahoo Finance has reported that last week a U.S. bankruptcy judge protected an essential cash fusion for Easter Day ranches, making sure that 54,000 head of cattle would be fed. In recent weeks, Tyson Foods sued Easter Day ranches for more than $200 million over misappropriated funds, which led to Easter Day's filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. After this occurred, Tyson, Easter Day's only customer, halted payments to the ranch, which caused the family operation to run low on funds, threatening their ability to feed the cattle that they had left standing in their yards. Tyson agreed to wire $1.75 million to the ranch so feed supplies could be replenished. According to co-chief restructuring officer T. Scott Avilia, Avilia, excuse me, if Tyson would not have wired the money, 54,000 head of cattle would have went without feed and been, uh, been at risk of death. Meeting Place has reported that last Thursday, Food and Water Watch, along with other numerous consumer advocacy groups, filed a complaint with the Federal Trade Commission, the FTC, claiming that Smithfield Foods has made false claims about how their pork products are produced. The groups are asking the FTC to make Smithfield remove misleading marketing claims, stop making such claims in the future, and disseminate uh, corrective statements in the media. 
The complaint states that Smithfield Foods is misleading consumers by falsely marketing and advertising its products as being produced in an environmentally in an environmentally responsible and sustainable way. Instead of being sustainably produced, the complaint explains that Smithfield's products are a result of highly industrialized, dangerous, and extractive practices that recklessly pollute the environment and harm local communities. Smithfield defended its practices, saying that the claims are false. According to Chiero Lombardo, Smithfield's chief exec excuse me, Smithfield's chief administrative officer, the complaint has no merit. Smithfield is focused on providing safe, affordable food while also focusing on sustainability. Finally, National Beef Wire reported last Friday that Choice Box Beef ended the day two at 234.58. That was up 30, 33 cents. And Select Box Beef ended the day at 220.79 and that was up 35 cents. That is all I have for you guys this morning. I hope everyone had a great weekend. I hope everyone is staying warm. This weather is sure something. It is absolutely frigid here. Have yourself a great Monday and I'll see you guys tomorrow morning.